I want my country back. I've had to do a lot of soul searching on my political journey. And he was laughing. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor. And let me be clear, right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. My opinions are not controversial. There are opinions which are shared by millions of people up and down the country. Good morning, everybody. Very good to see you this Monday morning. Thanks for being here. Now, something extraordinary happened last week. The Chancellor, he said, we have a plan, and the plan is working. The Prime Minister repeats it endlessly. Clearly no one's told them that the economy, our country, is in recession. Clearly no one's told them that that recession per person is the longest since records began almost 70 years ago. People are getting poorer. That recession, almost two years per person. If that's their plan, well, it's not the plan of the British people to get poorer. Let's be honest, it's not surprising they're sinking in the polls if they think a recession is a good idea. And something significant has changed in recent months. I've noticed people's concerns and anxiety has turned to anger and fury. Because nothing works. Britain is broken. And we all know who broke it. There are so many areas where it's broken. But let me just give you a few examples. I mean, there is absolute fury across the country that the Tories have imposed on us without any democratic consent whatsoever, in complete breach of what they promised in the 2019 manifesto and previous manifestos, they've imposed on us mass immigration that we can see from the data is making us poorer. No question whatsoever. People also, separately, are appalled at what's going on in our streets, in our towns and our cities, week in, week out, with these anti-Semitic, hate-filled, pro-Hamas marches that is leading to genuine fear. The Jewish community in London, afraid to go out at the weekend, many of them thinking about leaving London to go back to Israel. What a shocking indictment of the performance of the boss of the Met Police, of the person in charge of security in London, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, of the Home Secretary and of the Prime Minister, that the Jewish community are terrified. Absolutely appalling. Separately, people are horrified, horrified that this gender ideology is infecting our schools, poisoning the minds of our children, parents, grandparents, in their millions, shocked by this. And also, people are waking up to the absurd multi-trillion pound cost of this obsession with net zero. But any of us who want to talk about this, oh no, we're a bigot, yeah, we're mis-smeared, we must be labelled, we're phobic in some way. No, we're not. We're just talking common sense. The genuine concerns of tens of millions of people up and down the country. And it's only Reform UK that is prepared to have that conversation. I've said it before, but I have to say, I think the Westminster establishment has never been more out of touch with the concerns of tens of millions of hard-working British people up and down the country. That's why we're going up in the polls. Just last week, we were only 5% behind the Tories, who are sinking under sinking Sunak to just 18%. We're going up and they're going down. Now, many people think this is a short-term pressure group for one election. Forget it. You're wrong. This is a serious, medium-term plan. We have to shape and influence and change the course of direction of this country of ours. Because at the moment, it is broken and people are getting poorer. And where does this start? Well, I'll tell you where we're polling even higher, and that, of course, is in the Red Wall. Millions and millions of people, as they hear about us, they say, thank heavens for reform. So let's be clear about our ambition. It's bold, it's ambitious. In the Red Wall, this election, 
we want to replace the Tories as the main alternative to Starmageddon. That's what it is. It's a nightmare coming to everyone near you in 2024. So we're going to replace the Tories in the Red Wall, which means we need a champion, of course, of the Red Wall, someone who completely understands it, who is trusted by voters to tell it as it is, no nonsense, no waffle, clear, basic common sense. And I'm delighted to announce that I have found that champion of the Red Wall for Reform UK. He's also, coincidentally, going to be Reform UK's first Member of Parliament in the House of Commons. He is, of course, a person of great integrity, no nonsense, and is the Member of Parliament in the County of Nottinghamshire for Ashfield. Please welcome Mr Lee Anderson. Thank you very much indeed. Brilliant. Thank you. Let's go have a quick, uh, a quick vote of them. Who said that? He's not having an interview now. He's not having an interview. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done. Let me see you. Can you see me? Can you all see me here? So I want to keep it brief, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will start by saying I want my country back. Over the last year or so, I've had to do a lot of soul searching on my political journey. And it was laughing. And I don't expect much in politics other than to be able to speak my mind and speak on behalf is that you, Harry, laughing? Speak on behalf of my friends, family and my constituents. Now, I might not know a lot of these long words some of the people use in Parliament, but I know a few short ones. Uh, but unfortunately, this sometimes leads me to be labelled as controversial, controversial in my opinions. But my opinions are not controversial. They are opinions which are shared by millions of people up and down the country. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. It's not controversial to fight back in a culture war, a culture war that is sweeping our nation. I am proud of our great country and the gifts it has given to the world over hundreds of years. Gifts like the Industrial Revolution, railways, culture, sports, medicine, such as vaccines, which have saved hundreds of millions of lives. And we've defeated fascism in two world wars. We have always punched above our weight on the international stage. But now, like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are giving away our way of life. We are allowing people to erase our history. We are giving up our streets to a minority of people who literally hate our way of life. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. And quite frankly, some of them need to get out more. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor, for which I was stripped of the whip in the, from the Conservative Party. And let me be clear, right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. People will say that I've took a gamble, and I'm prepared to gamble on myself as I know from my mailbag how many people in this country support Reform UK on what they have to say. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Now this may sound offensive to the Liberal elite, but it's not offensive to my friends, my family, my constituents and some of my donors. Constituents like my mum and dad, who told me they could not vote for me unless I joined Reform UK. 
My parents are both nearly 80, and they get it, and I must not let them down. As I said at the beginning, I want my country back. Thank you. Brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah? Fantastic. So, um, 